Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, publisher of PhotoFocus. Let's take a look at the new mask tools inside of Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. You'll find them right here under the new mask area. There's a bunch of tools here that were previously available in different forms inside of Photoshop, but now they actually work with raw images. Let's start with this portrait photo by selecting our subject. You'll see that it attempts to analyze and does a really good job of actually identifying the subject. If you feel like it gets areas you don't want, for example, this little area in here, it's no big deal to touch it up. Just choose subtract and you can use a brush. Left bracket for the smaller brush and I'll just paint that away just so that it doesn't get that little pocket there. And that's a tough area of transition for AI to correctly guess. All right, that looks a lot better. The overlay option is turned on here. And what we're going to do is make an initial adjustment. Let's turn off the overlay. And what I want to do is really balance him out. He's a little overexposed. So I'm actually taking him down about a third of a stop just to get him to really intersect nicely. And playing with our texture here in clarity, I just want to add a little bit of extra detail there. And you can see how that really helps with his edge. Clarity comes through quite nice. Now I like this, but I want to add a sense of directionality. So let's take this mask here. We'll rename it and call it portrait. Now what I want to do is duplicate that and we're going to make another adjustment that's similar. So we'll call this portrait lighting. So let's rename the copy and call it portrait lighting. Now what we're going to do is subtract from this. So you see we have the portrait gradient and I can choose subtract. And what we'll do is use a linear gradient to create a sense of fall off. So you see that we've got our base selection and we can click and drag here and start to intersect. If we show the overlay, it's much easier to view. So by dragging this and moving it, you see how we're really adjusting the light so that the red ruby lith areas are active and the rest of this has great fall off. You can drag that as you need to and even reposition that there just to create a sense of a selection over this side of his face and a little bit of the shoulder. I like that. You can really view it up there. That's quite effective. Now, what I want to do is modify this a bit. So I'll uncheck show overlay. and I'm going to further darken that light down over his corner. That's really cutting it nicely. And I'm going to warm that up using the hue temperature here. You see how we can start to roll the hue slightly and that's going to get pretty aggressive pretty quick, but not bad. Let's reset that and instead just do the more gradual temperature slider and I can warm that light coming over his shoulder. So just a small transformation there. If we toggle that on and off, you can see that that warm light coming across his face is quite effective. I really like that. Now let's do some color grading. His blue jeans are just too bright. So what we're going to do is select those. I'll create a new mask here and this time base it upon color range. This way I can choose here and make a basic selection to target it. And if I hold down the shift key, you see how we start to make a basic selection. That works out nicely. And I'm going to subtract here and subtract the luminance range and just click on the shirt. Now that was a little bit too broad, but we can easily target that. So it's not so aggressive and just goes after the brighter areas of just the shirt itself. Now I like that. Let's refine a little, come down here to color range and we'll click again with a shift click and start to pick up more. And these two are working together. Now, if the luminance range is too aggressive, you can see the luminance map. This makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. And now we can play with what's being selected. The key here is to really reduce that and play with the overall selection. Now, not bad. The luminance map is working okay, but I think it's actually getting in the way. So I'm going to remove that from this instead, and we'll just get rid of it here. And you see, we go back to the initial selection. And that's fine, but I don't want the shirt. Well, again, this is simple. Let's do a couple of subtractions. What we'll do here is subtract and tell it that we want to take the portrait mask. So we'll subtract here and say subtract select subject that will make the basic selection and now 
we can invert that. And look at how it flips. Now the background is ignored. That's cool. I'll add another subtraction here and just say brush. And now very easily by adjusting the size of the brush, I can just remove the top half of his body. Look how simple that is to just transform and remove away the parts we don't want. So it's tricky there with the color range because there is blue in the jacket and there are blue reflected in the white of the shirt, but that's quite effective. By using combo masks, we can dial this in. I like it. And if I want to pick anything up, I can brush on the pants themselves. But all in all, I think that's pretty effective. Now, let's just get rid of the little bit there in his arm so that we're not selecting the jacket. Undo there. Smaller brush, left bracket. There we go. Perfect. Now we can really transform those jeans. I'm going to darken them down substantially. Look, it's like a total wardrobe change. He went from really these overly bright ones to much darker. And we can roll the color temperature there to really dial in the blue of the jeans. And while we're at it, let's push the texture and the clarity. Now, when you do this, I always suggest zooming in so you can see it. And that's working quite nice. I can see that that's really pushing there and come into life. Now, don't be afraid if you see this little here. That's just showing you what's selected. You could choose the mask itself or just select a different tool temporarily and get a better idea of what's happening. If you see these artifacts, that's just warning here that we've got peaking. So that's not actually the mask. I know it looks like the mask, but this is confusing because we have the peaking overlays on. Well, in this case, what we need to do is back off the whites ever so slightly and do a little bit of highlight recovery. And now that's done a good job of bringing that back to life. So we don't have to worry so much about the jeans. All right. So far, so good. I like where that's going. And we've really brought our subject into life. Now let's work on the background. So we'll go back to the masks and look, all of these are here and working. It's really quite amazing. We'll rename this and call these jeans in case we ever need them again. And now I want to create a new mask for the background. But to do this, I'm just going to duplicate the portrait background. And we've got it. We can invert that. Just choose the actual subject here and say invert. Now it flips it. And there's the brush. Invert. What this helps you do is see what's happening with the brush itself. Now I'm going to flip that back. There we go. And that's pretty good. If I show the overlay, I can see what's being selected. In this case, the brush isn't helping me. So I'll just get rid of that there. I could just take that and delete it. Perfect. Now I want to make a gradual selection. So it's not selecting the foreground as much. Remember, this is easy by combining things. So we'll call this background and subtract. We're going to use the gradient here and just subtract a little bit on the bottom. Notice how simple that is to move around and reflect there. That's nice on the background. We're not choosing the foreground there. And that's really quite effective going up to down. Now, what I'm going to do is refine that a little. First up, you normally wouldn't use it this way, but don't forget negative sharpness is basically going to help defocus that a bit. And we could take that down and really play with the negative texture and a little bit of negative clarity. And that de-emphasizes that area. Now, what we'll also do is darken that just a bit and play with the transition there on the shadow versus the highlights to create a more gradual blend. Now, if we toggle that on and off, you'll notice it was a perfect de-emphasis on the background, drawing our eye to the subject. I like that. Let's duplicate this here one more time. And this time we're going to rename it and we're going to call it foreground. Everything is still editable. Grab the linear gradient and just swing it the other way. And basically we've reversed it here. So it's still selecting and choosing the foreground of that grass, which is cool. I like it. 
We're going to back off that so it's not so aggressive on the exposure change and really dial in good contrast and play with the temperature and tint. A little cooler there actually works quite nicely on the grass. I like that. And that really comes to life well. Let's put a little bit of clarity and texture back in because we want that in the foreground. And look at how we can really pop those wood chips in the bench. By playing with the texture slider there, it really just brings it to life without negatively affecting our subject. Again, these are truly amazing and you can really tell what's going on as you mouse. The ability to add and subtract masks is quite powerful. All right, I think this is looking quite good. Let's take a look here. And that's pretty good. We'll go back and I'll just go side by side. All right, we'll close the mask panel. There we go. And looking at that, that's just transformative. I'm really amazed at how much we've been able to bring out there. And by using those different gradients, creating shadows, emphasize the directionality of the light, it really adds to this image. And I'm quite impressed with the overall transformation.